If you have a look at the vector scope, you can see those little boxes. They represent the color bars. At the moment, we're not looking at them, but I'm going to show you up here. You can choose the viewer and bang, there's your color bars. You can see the um, targets for those color bars there. There's a little pink line here, which disappears up into the sort of between yellow and red. That's a, a flesh tone sort of positioner. It shows you where skin tones normally sit in the spectrum. And that helps you when you're trying to make a judgment about skin colors and whether there's much information in there. On the waveform monitor down at the bottom there, what we're looking at is the brightness of each of those color bar steps. And as I said before, the yellow one being next to white means that it's fairly bright. There it is there. And you can see I've got this little line which that little line tells me what levels I'm at. I can read across to the left hand side where you've got percentage levels. And it gives me a clue on brightness, colour, whether you're going outside, what's acceptable. It, but it's also, um, it's pretty hard to explain the vector scope until you see colours moving around in there and, and see what they're doing. But that's really what you're looking at. It allows you to judge saturation based on the distance from the centre to the outside and the hue. Um, it's a great way of comparing two shots that may have similar colours because you can see small changes in there more easily than you can see them on the picture. Um, on the right hand side at the top right, it's called a histogram. You may have seen it in Photoshop or other similar image editing applications. It's an energy spectrum display. So what it's really showing you is how much of the picture is in a particular brightness range. So from the left, you're down at black, and at the right, you're at white, and the vertical axis is the amount of information in those different areas of between black and white. Um, and as you can see here, they've got these weird individual lines simply because we've got set grayscale steps. There's no variation between them, they're just on and off. The bottom right, is an RGB parade, they call it. So what we're looking at is the separated red, green and blue signals. It's interpolated because most television signals are not RGB, they're what's called YUV, which is um, a special format, which is a luminance signal, which is recorded separately from two colour component signals. And it's just a way of getting it recorded in an efficient manner. So it's kind of broken apart, recorded, put back together again whereas RGB signals are like three separate channels all recorded together. Um, but this gives us a way of having a look at the RGB signals because things like these little projectors project RGB signals and it gives you a, a bit of a clue into any odd legal issues you may have because you can have a particular channel going too hot, like red for example, someone's got a really bright red top on and you've got red lights on them, things like that, they can go really excessively red. You can't always see it in the display and this allows you to see things like that. It allows you to see errors in one channel or another. Particularly good if you're dealing with green screen or blue screen work because you can see very clearly the level of the backing in those channels. Um, any other questions about, about that one? Yes. Uh, yeah, kind of loosely. They're like a slightly different ways of looking at the same thing. Yep. Um, one of the advantages of the histogram is that when anything goes above 100, it turns red. So it's very easy to see something that's kind of illegal brightness-wise, luminance-wise. Um, it's pretty hard with colour bars because I can't make them illegal. But if I go back to our current frame and take the legaliser off that, for a moment, hang on. Okay, we'll take broadcast safe off, bang. You can see that in the background there. Now, that's, uh, that's pretty hard to read on the waveform monitor because <laughs> it's just this blank of stuff that goes right up to the top. 
but on the right you can see what's happening very clearly. But what it also shows, and it's, it's something that the waveform monitor is not particularly good at, is this area here, it shows you where the energy is. And I can see that at 80%, there's a lot of information at 80% in that picture. Um, you can kind of broadly work that out from the waveform monitor, but it's nowhere near as clear. Because what the waveform monitor is displaying is a sample of the actual image rather than the energy of the image. I'll just squeeze this back so you can see what I'm talking about. So in terms of the, this, this waveform monitor is showing us from the left to the right of the picture. So the left of that waveform monitor is representing pixels on the left of this picture and likewise on the right. So if, if, if you look at graphics, you'll see it. You, you can actually see things, if you just put a red you know, circle on the right, you just have this little blob on the right of the waveform monitor. The histogram is actually showing the energy in the whole thing. It's not showing you a representation of the image itself. It's a, a you should probably write a book on those, those tools actually. The, okay, the, there are particular, the, the television signal basically is one volt of information. I've got to go back to analog because digital is kind of, you can't talk that way, you can't kind of get your head around it. But it's like one volt peak to peak, they call it. Um, so you're talking about a percentage of brightness. So white is one volt, black is zero volts, if you're talking about the actual signal. Um, so mid-grey is half a volt. So it's measured that way. So when I'm talking percentage, I'm talking about percentage brightness of the signal in terms of the luminance of the signal from black to white. But likewise, you can also speak in terms of percentages of saturation of the colour, which, is, which you would measure. If you have a look at the little waveform, uh, sorry, the little vector scope over here, you'll see it's got some numbers here. Same thing, that's considered to be 100%. There are a few issues with what's called 100% colour bars versus 75. Anyone who wants to know about that stuff, you can ask me afterwards because it's not particularly relevant to grading images. It's a bit more of a technical discussion. Now I just need to reset that because I've really messed that up. Okay. Uh, give me a moment. Okay, another thing I should touch on is the environment you're working in is absolutely critical to colour correction. Way more critical than for any other operation you're going to do with an image. First of all, you need to know that your monitor has the right colours showing on it. It's why LCDs are not used very much for colour correction because they have issues with colour rendition. They're not able to reproduce the amount of colours that a CRT will display. And that means that subtle tones can be lost. So it's a, bit, it's a little bit more difficult to grade on something like that. Having said that, people do it all the time. I'm forced into it. A lot of places don't have CRTs. You just have to grade off an LCD monitor. So it's worth having someone set it up and make sure that the, the colours on that monitor are neutral. Out of the factory, I would never grade anything off any LCD monitor that came out of a factory and wasn't set up because they're generally the wrong colour. The white point is too blue or too yellow. You really have to know that it's set up for a particular um, television white point, which is 6500 or 6400 Kelvin, which, is a, which defines what the white colour is. Um, that's pretty important. Another thing that's really important about LCD screens is that they crop off any information above 100%. So if, and all cameras will record white levels up to about 109%. And the first time I came across this as a problem was doing a job where they'd replaced all their old monitors with LCD panels and the graphics department shipped all this stuff in and we had to integrate graphics and live people shot on a white background. And everything looked perfect. The client came in, they approved it. We burnt the DVDs and it was crap. 